Good evening, Niner fans. We got some news to talk about tonight. I didn't think we were going to be live, but we are here. We got some news to talk about. A sneaky little signing the San Francisco 49ers uh, just released, um, according to Aaron Wilson. Uh, like I said a few minutes ago, he's a linebacker, special teamer, uh, Ezekiel Turner. Ezekiel Turner. He uh, previously played for the Arizona Cardinals. He had a block punt on Mitch Wisnowski in 2020. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's sneaky signing the 49ers. They lost Oren Burks today. Oren Burks is officially an op. He went to the Eagles today. I don't know if y'all saw that, but it was announced earlier today that Oren Burks, the 49ers' former linebacker that they got from the Packers a couple years ago, has signed with the Philadelphia Eagles. So today, 49ers basically replaced him. Uh, you know, Oren Burks has been a really solid special teams linebacker and the 49ers want to improve on their special teams and today they got Ezekiel Turner um just about 20 minutes ago it was announced by Aaron Wilson on Twitter and you know this guy's actually a pretty solid special teamer he's a linebacker but we don't expect him to be playing much or starting you know yesterday they got Devondre Campbell they brought back uh Demetrius Flanagan Fowles and now Ezekiel Turner can showcase his special teams Ability, will he make the roster? I don't know. The 49ers do have quite a bit of linebackers. It's a linebacker factory. You know, Jalen Graham and D. Winters, the two youngsters from last year, you want to hope they make this roster and, you know, they're ready to take that next step. So 49ers have really stacked themselves at linebacker, uh, if you really think about it. So, again, uh, Ezekiel Turner has a chance to really showcase what he could do on special teams and see if he can make the final roster. Worst-case scenario... He gets placed on a practice squad or something. And that's, again, 49ers, they get these players, they bring them in, they they need training camp bodies. And then if they like them, they'll keep them around on special teams. So um, we like the shirt. Brock Purdy, everybody's liking the shirt. Yeah, we got this shirt from Lolita Customs on Instagram. That's my guy, Lolita Customs. Um, yeah, shout out to them. They hooked it up with the Brock Purdy shirt. So uh, how we feeling? How we doing? How we feeling? We got another signing. You lose Oren Burks, you get Ezekiel Turner. I'm happy about it. Um, again, Oren Burks, a lot of people were were cooking him. They were cooking him in the comments today because of the Super Bowl. Ooh, yeah. Oren Burks didn't have the best Super Bowl performance, although he had to come in for Dre Greenlaw, and that's big shoes to fill. Travis uh, Kelsey cooked him, unfortunately, and Oren Burks now goes to the Eagles. And their linebacking core, I was looking at the linebacking core of the Eagles today. I was like, man, it just – doesn't look too good. It doesn't look too good, actually. If you're an Eagles fan, Devin White is their linebacker one. And, you know, I was looking at Devin White because at first I was like, oh, man, I can't believe they got Devin White. He got benched last year. He kind of – he really fell apart from where he was when he first came into the league. And now Oren Burks is probably their best – second best line, maybe third best linebacker. I mean, no disrespect to Oren Burks, but that's your second, third best linebacker. That's a weakness. So, uh Yeah. Again, he's a special teams ace, and so is Ezekiel Turner with the 49ers um, uh, signed. Yeah, Beast Mode says, incoming. Is he good? Is he good, chat? Is he good? <laughs> it's funny. Whenever somebody gets signed with the Niners, people are is he good? Is he good? I mean, of course. We want to know if he's good. He's on the 49ers. He's going to be good until he makes a mistake. That's kind of how it rolls, right? Until he screws up, then you can be like, ah, I resign him. Um, you know, everybody thought Isaiah Oliver was going to be good last year. Right? I remember we signed him and said, okay, nice, low-key, nice signing. And we hated Isaiah Oliver at the end. So, honestly, we don't know until they play on the team. Uh, I mean, again, Ezekiel Turner, you're not sitting there saying, Ooh, oh, my God, they signed Ezekiel Turner. We'll see. He's a special teamer. I'm not going to sit there and think he's going to be, like, the greatest player of all time. But um, they needed special teamers. And, you know, the 49ers are a team that, really struggled in special teams last year they, they really did bottom line they special they they struggled in special teams last year and i think they're making a a very big effort in making sure their 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 team improves special teams right they were 25th ranked in special teams last year it's not good that's not good that's worse than middle of the pack so I think they really want to make sure they're better in that area because you want to make sure your defense is better, right? You want to make sure your offense is better. You also need to make sure your special teams is better because that's a big part of the game. People take um, 
you know, for granted. They, they forget about that. Now, I think in the draft, it sets them up. The 49ers are really setting themselves to go and go offensive line heavy in the draft. And and I was talking to Dave Lombardi today. We were live on Instagram. And um, shout out to my boy Dave. Thank you for hopping on the live. He kind of made a big point because I asked him, what do you expect them to do in the draft? And he says, you know, don't ex- don't be surprised if the 49ers trade up, you know. And I thought this too the other day. I was like, maybe the 49ers will trade up. They have 10 draft picks. They pretty much are filling all their roster holes and depth pieces. You can't expect 10 players that they draft to make the final roster. You don't want, you know, they'll probably cut someone or try to hope that someone gets on the practice squad. I I honestly could see the 49ers trading up because I was talking to someone last night and I said, you know, if the 49ers really want an elite tackle, an elite tackle in this draft, they got to trade up. And I could see the 49ers maybe trading up to get a top 15 to 20 pick and taking that premium right tackle because you got to think about the 49ers offensive line, right? Trent Williams, he's 36. Um, Aaron Aaron Banks, great player. He's going into his contract here, actually. I I totally didn't realize until like yesterday. I was like, Aaron Banks is going into his contract. This is his last year under contract. Extension season, extension season. Will they be able to bring him back next year? We're going to talk about, are they going to be able to extend Aaron Banks? Jake Brendel, he's 32 years old. Uh, Colton McKivitt, he's 28, but he's not a starting tackle. And then you have... John Feliciano, who's been in the league for 10 years, he's 32, and he said it's going to be his last ride. Your offensive line is kind of old, if you really think about it. So they do need to think about the future. They need to think about Trent Williams when he's long gone, long and gone and done with the team, which is going to make me cry when it happens. Um, and again, Aaron Banks, they got to figure out an extension with him next year. So they definitely have to go and get a um quality set of linemen in this draft i think it's setting himself up for that so those are my takes on the 49ers and what's to expect i still think there could be a blockbuster in the making i hope i pray i want this to happen i hope monday morning we wake up and the 49ers sign justin simmons and we're going to be hyped out of our freaking mind that's what we need that would feed families on monday if we get breaking news the 49ers have signed Justin Simmons. Hey, tomorrow. Forget Monday. The Sunday. Make, make it happen on Sunday. Make our Sunday great. You know? So we will see throwback. He says Spencer Burford might not be on this team next year. Still young. He still has a chance to develop. But yeah, last year he took a step back. He had a good solid rookie season and then he took a step back last year. Really did. Unfortunate for him because second half of the season, Feliciano came on and he really stole the show from him. I, and I like. Burford, that's my guy. We we went and did a whole podcast together. I love Burford. That's my guy. But he did take a step back last year. Uh, but Feliciano was was really good. He's a very good veteran, and I'm glad that they brought him back. So <clears throat> Beast Mode says, bring in David Bakhtiari, who was released by Green Bay. Ah, you know, a lot of people say take a flyer on Bakhtiari. He's had a lot of injuries. Like the same, the people that were opposed to bringing in Joey Bosa should be opposed to bringing in Bakhtiari. And there's no hate. On Bakhtiari, I think he's been a fantastic player, but he's on the wrong side of his 30s, I think. And he's had ACL injuries and just a lot of bang, you know, he's just been banged up over the last couple of years. So I, I wouldn't want to take Bakhtiari. Uh, and, and again, he's a left tackle. So what are you going to do with him? He's not going to go play right tackle. He's a left tackle. And you got the greatest left tackle in the game right now still on your team. Although he is 36, um, closer to my age, which is not good. Yeah, my man Legend Garcia says he can't even finish two games a year. That's sad, man. I like Bakhtiari, but you're right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> At this point, anyone in the Niners is injury prone. Take the risk. I, I mean, you got to be calculated. You got to be smart. I, I, I mean, yeah, for a vet minimum, I, I'm not going to sit here and say I would hate it if the 49ers take a vet minimum. So, uh, Jesus says the Niners could have gotten Buda Baker. Still can, right? Did he sign with anybody? Did Buda Baker sign with anybody? I don't think he did. I don't remember seeing a Buda Baker noti go off today. Go get Buda. Go get Buda Baker. Actually, I want I want Justin Simmons. Uh, but Buda Baker, fucking dope, dude. I like Buda. Buda and Kittle in the same locker room. <laughs> I'm here, Buda. <laughs> I'm still here. The 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 face, the stiff arm. Wow, that was a crazy play. Um, Cosmo says, is Trent Brown still available? He is, but I don't think Kyle Shanahan 
wants Trent Brown on his team. That was a guy, you remember Trent Brown was on the squad. Niners got rid of him. Um, they drafted Mike McGlinchey, and the rest is history. I mean, Trent Brown definitely became a solid player after he left the Niners. Um, Bill Belichick kind of molded him into a solid tackle. I, ju I just don't think he's Kyle Shanahan's uh, type of tackle. I don't think he's uh, – I don't think he's his guy, but I, I like Trev Brown. I think he's a good player. He definitely played his best after he left the Niners. So, uh, but yeah, you know, at the end of the day, Niners. Uh, I think they've had a good off season. I asked a question earlier on uh, IG and Twitter. I asked you guys grade the draft, or sorry, not the draft, the free agents. Uh, you know, I, I gave it a B yesterday. I think it's a solid B. A lot of people weren't happy with it. There were some people that were okay with it. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, you're not going to sign a splash player every, you know, every offseason. I think the Niners went for their needs, for their holes. They lost a lot of players, you know, and they had to fill those defensive holes. And they they really had no depth on the D-line. And I know people wanted offensive line, but I don't think the offensive linemen that were available were better than any of the defensive players uh, that they had. They added some cornerback depth. They added, you know, some linebacking depth, which they needed. They got a pass rusher off the other side of Nick Bosa. I really like the Leonard Floyd signing. I think that was that was sneaky, man. I really like Leonard Floyd. I think he's going to have a, a good season with the Niners when he finally signs and gets everything going. He's a high motor. He's a very high motor, guys. So uh, let's take a look. Jesus says C+, plus, Cosmo C-, minus, Rick says C. Yeah, I know a lot of people are saying it's average. I think if, if we get Justin Simmons, everybody's grade will go up. I think that that is a true statement. If Justin Simmons gets signed, I think the grade will go up. On I, again, maybe I'm a little bit more homer than you guys, maybe. But I get it. I get why everybody's not, you know, too happy. There's O-line. They didn't get a marquee guy. Other teams really went and they signed big-time players. But, again, the Niners, they had to cut costs. They need to bring back Brandon Ayuk on an extension. Uh, and, and at the end of the day, I know they lost Armstead, but they went and got smart, you know, savvy players that are cheaper that the Niners can really build and develop on their team, you know, with Chris Kasurik on the D-line. I know it didn't make a splash. I get it. But at the end of the day, I think they did a good job, in my opinion. But, yeah, it would have been nice if they wouldn't have got a splashy player, of course. It's always it's always cool to see the big name. Oh, my God, the splash, you know. So I, I get it. So. <laughs> hey, Suze, I wanted the Niners to get a all-defense with Burns, Chris Jones, and Aziz. See, now... Now you're crazy because the Niners don't have that type of money. Um, let me see. Adrian says, do you think they use the draft picks to trade up or package them? Yeah, so I talked about this a few minutes ago. I think the Niners are going to trade up. I think they're going to try to get uh, a solid a left or right tackle. in the. I think they're going to trade up to get a like elite tackle. in the. I, I, I don't know. I have this feeling that the Niners are going to just go in and say, hey, look, we got 10 picks. I don't think 10 picks are going to make this roster. We'll trade up and we'll get um, – a right tackle. I, I don't know. We'll see. Christian Wilkins would have been nice. Yeah, he would have been, Jonathan. He would have been nice. But he's signed a big contract with the Raiders. The Niners weren't throwing that money to Christian Wilkins. Definitely a good player. Uh, my man Flood, what's good? How we doing? Uh, my man Beast Mode says, is Ronnie Bella a prompt returner? I mean, right now, if you were to look at the roster, you could probably pick him up out of the lineup and say he's the best chance. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I think the Niners aren't done in that uh, department yet. I think they'll still look around the roster. I still think they'll look around the league, and maybe they'll draft a guy, a punt returner. They definitely need a really good punt returner. I know they, they haven't had a good punt returner since Teddy Ginn, man. That's a long time ago. Uh, I mean, Ray Ray wasn't horrible, but he wasn't great. They signed him to be a you know premium kick returner. He was supposedly the best kick returner in the league when they got him. It just wasn't. He just wasn't that guy, a punt returner. But, hey, no fault to him. He goes to Atlanta. Good luck to him. Nothing but the best. So, <clears throat> let's see. Any other big questions here? You guys like the signing of Ezekiel Turner? I liked it. I mean, uh, it's nothing special, but I think he'll be a good special teamer. At the end of the day, he's just going to replace Oren Burks, who most Niner fans apparently didn't like after reading the comments today. <laughs> oh, man. RF Gang says, at 31, best D-line or O-line. If they stay at 31... I think they'll take the best available player, and it may not be an offensive lineman. But I think if they want a tackle, they trade up and they get a tackle. They can do what they want at this point. Trade up. You don't need 10 picks. So uh, is Cordero Patterson available, says Beast Mode? I believe he is. I think he, uh, 
I think I saw a um, goodbye post from Cordero Patterson the other day. Uh, let me see. Cordero Patterson is an American football player. Uh, da, 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 free agent. Yeah. Cordero Patterson is a free agent. It'd be fun to have Cordero Patterson on this team. I like that guy. Like, He's he's another version of a deep. He's another wide back like Debo. Can you imagine? Can you imagine having Cordero? I know he's not the same player he was a couple years back, but it'd be fun to have Cordero. Cordero and the D-boy? I like that. That'd be nice. Douglas says, Justin Simmons, go get. Go get Justin Simmons. Lynch, go get him. Go sign him. Yeah, pick up Debo and Patterson. It'd be fun. Well, I, mean, I remember that a couple years back. The Niners did want him, but he wanted to go back to Atlanta. Um, Jesus says, the 1994 Niners went all out. Dent, Ricky, Jackson, Ken Norton, Dion. Whew. I, yeah, that was that was a great year. Dion was the cherry on top. I remember we got him. I was like a kid in the candy. So I love Dion because he played he played baseball on the rate on the 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 Braves. And I loved the Braves growing up. That's all we could watch in Vegas. It was Ted Turner broadcasting. All they showed was the Braves. They shoved it down our face. And I was the biggest Braves fan. Chipper Jones, Andrew Jones, Greg Maddox, John Smoltz, Tommy Glavitt, the whole squad. I loved them. Right. And, um, oh, man, Andres Galarraga, the big cat. Whatever, I can sit here and talk about the Braves. I, that's when I liked baseball. And Dion, I remember Dion, boy, was on the Braves. And then he went to the Niners. I was like, bro, Dion's on the Braves and the Niners. It won a World Series that year and a Super Bowl. I was hyped that year. I was geeked out of my mind that year. Holy crap. That was a good year. Chipper Jones, that was my guy. I love Chipper Jones. I actually played baseball back in... Back in those days. And I, I used to love baseball growing up. I loved baseball because of the Braves. I played baseball. It was fun. I thought it was I thought it was uh, Chipper Jones. I wasn't that good. <laughs> um, a red eye. It says, Oren Burks was cut for being Travis Kelsey's lap dog. He allowed, I think, eight, he says, eight to nine passes after Greenlaw was injured. He allowed nine catches on nine targets. Sheesh. Javi Lopez. Heck yeah, man. My boy Flood. Javi Lopez was the best catcher in the league back in those days. Bro, Armando says, I didn't know you did. Oh, yeah, I was a big baseball guy back in the day. In the steroid era, oh, the juice ball era, who didn't like baseball? Griffey. I had the Griffey, the Griffey sneaks. Um, my boy, I watched him play, uh, you know, when they had that squad with uh, A-Rod and Griffey and Jay Buhner and Edgar Martinez. I went up to Seattle. My sister used to live in Seattle. I remember going up to Safeco, watching the game up there. Oh, it was a beautiful time. It was a good time. Um, yeah, yeah, I used to love baseball, man. I had the the Deion Sanders cle uh, shoes, the Nikes. I had the the Griffies. Everybody had the Griffies back then. Those were cold blooded. Yeah, Greg Maddox was my favorite player. He's my favorite pitcher. I loved it, man. But the, but what I'm saying is, we took a little diversion here. What I'm saying is, yeah, Deion Sanders, '94 Niners went out and got him, and I love Deion because I really. Loved them from baseball. So that's the story. Good stuff. <clears throat> Smoltzy. What's up, everybody? What's up, media? How are we feeling about this uh, signing today? Ezekiel Turner. Smash that like button. button. He says, smash that like button. Check it out. How's it doing? Um, yeah, good. We're doing good, my man. My man, Robbie, says the drop-off from Greenlaw to Burks is what I think cost us the Super Bowl. Don't get me wrong. There's plenty of other mistakes. But when Greenlaw in... They win the game. He was the difference. I agree with that. That was one of the reasons they lost. Not the only reason, but it was definitely a big reason. Like, let's sit here and, and talk about that. Because Greenlaw was such a fantastic player. In that Super Bowl, he was cooking. He was cooking. You take him out, the energy out, it kind of, like, deflated this team. You saw the reactions. Mourner was, like, so sick and Kittle. And they were like, dang, man. It, it kind of felt like to this team. You remember in that NFC Championship last year when – Brock went out and he, you know, had the elbow injury and like the, they were deflated. I kind of felt like the same energy after watching all the videos afterwards for the deep. Like they were deflated. They were deflated. They tried to play hard. They tried to play through it. And you could tell it was a different sense of energy. When he, when Greenlaw was in, it was just, I mean, it's all over the place. Now, uh, obviously there was other reasons they lost, which you said. But it definitely was a factor because Oren Burks was getting picked upon. Mahomes knew it. Mahomes knew. Mahomes knew he was you know, the easy target. And, and and no disrespect to Oren, but, I mean, he didn't expect to be in that moment. But at the end of the day, hey, next man up, 
you got to have that mentality. Okay, I'm the guy. I got to step up. I got to go in and, and make plays. But he did not make plays. And Kelsey was getting locked down in that first half. Second half, different story. Nine for nine, like we talked about. But, hey, Oren is a special teamer primarily, and that's what they replaced today. Don't expect Ezekiel Turner to be a world burner, a world beater. He's a special teams guy. That's what he is. And that's okay. We need special teamers. You need to make sure every department is top tier, ladies and gentlemen. So, yeah. I hope we play the Cowgirls in the playoffs and make Kendricks regret it. We're playing them next year for sure. They are going to make Kendricks regret I can't wait to see Kittle line up against Eric Kendricks and cook that boy. I want to see Kendricks get cooked. I want to see him get cooked up. I can't wait to see Kendricks get cooked up by Kittle. Oh my God, it's gonna it's gonna hit. It's gonna hit like sweet mother of oh whatever whatever. Oh, it's gonna hit like coffee in the morning. That's what it's gonna hit like. It's gonna be amazing. Holy smokes, George Kittle versus Eric Kendricks. Sign me up. I can't wait. Two touchdowns on his head. I'm calling it already. <laughs> Yeah, Debo and Kittle are going to cook Kendricks up, says media. My man. This is a good question, Julia. Says, Ezekiel Turner have a George Odom impact on special teams? I don't know. He he looks okay. He looks good. We just got to see if he makes the roster because here's the thing. There's a lot of linebackers on this team, so he has to be good enough to make this final roster. I think he could be a good special teamer. I don't know if he has the impact of George Odom because George Odom is a special teams player extraordinaire best of the business but i think ezekiel turner could have an impact if he makes that roster but you remember a lot of linebackers demetrius flanagan fouls that's fred warner and greenlaw's best friend he's making the team fred warner trey greenlaw if he can you know get past the injured reserve and all that he'll be on the team obviously um to start the season they got devondre campbell who they signed yesterday he is probably gonna make the team you got d winners you got jalen graham got a lot of linebackers so ezekiel turner has to make the roster first but I think he could have a good impact on special teams. Linebacker is a big spot for the 49ers. So um, we'll see. We'll see. My man Beast Mode says, so far, no one in the NFC is scary. Niners are still the team to beat if they're healthy. Yeah, they still got the Super Bowl roster. I just hope they don't have a Super Bowl hangover. That's all I hope. I hope they don't have a Super Bowl hangover. The Super Bowl hangover is real. Let's hope that it doesn't affect them and they stay healthy. Knock on wood. That is the key to getting back to the promised land. So, yeah, competition is a good thing. I agree with that. I agree with that. Uh, Hufunga returning is going to be key, says Beast Mode. I, I hope Hufunga is another guy that's healthy. That's the thing. I love Hufunga, but there's no guarantee he's going to be back to where he was. I think he can. I think he's a great player. He'll, you know, I'm sure he's going to re rehab and re he's attacking his recovery like no other. He's Hufunga. We've seen how like committed this guy is and how hard of a worker he is. He's always the first guy out, last one out in training camp practices. So I know Hufunga will be back and, you know, put his, you know, hardest work out there, but we'll see if uh, the knee affects him. It's a big injury. So I'm excited for the return of Hufunga though. I think he could be a dog. He was missed last year. He definitely was missed. You know, they had to sign linebacker or safeties, you know, every other week. They brought in Logan Ryan, uh, you know, Eric Harris, you know, Jair Brown, the rookie, came in and stepped up, but he got a little banged up. Tashawn Gibson was there, definitely, but he couldn't do it alone. So you needed to make sure that you had some solid, you know, depth. And, um, you know, they went and got some guys, but they weren't the same as Hufunga. So, uh, but yeah, we'll see. Competition definitely brings out the best in people. I hope tomorrow when we wake up, we got more news. I want to see Justin Simmons on the Niners. But with that, ladies and gentlemen... I'm going to bid you farewell. Maybe I'll go live on Instagram and talk about, you know, uh, some stuff. But you guys have a good rest of your night. Again, 49ers signed Ezekiel Turner. And they lose Oren Burks. Kind of a wash. You guys have a good rest of your night. Take care. Bang, bang. Nine again.